Welcome to New Zealand Week. We will be giving you top tips on where to go if you're visiting Auckland. And we will be attempting to make a few of the dishes we've had along the way. So let's start the show. Welcome to the first of our three specials about New Zealand. In each episode, we will be recreating one of the dishes that we enjoyed while we were there. Taste testing food that we brought back with us. Top tips and tricks of things that you should know about when you are in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And we will also be revealing our top three places to visit when you're in the Auckland area over these three episodes. So this is the first one. And I'm very glad that we are starting off on a subject that I know about very well. And what's that, Paul? Coffee. Ah, well, there is coffee, yes. <laughs> and mmm, let's have a smell of this. So this is a Matacana. Um, it's hand roasted in small batches in the village of Matacana. And you said that this is in the north of it's Auckland. in the north of the North Island. It's north of Auckland. And if you, in fact, we were almost going to be going very close to there, but we weren't able to do it. There's a town called Warkworth. And it's got a big forest area. Our um, boss guy at the hotel told us about this area, but we'd already looked it up. And it's also known, Warkworth is known for being a Scottish community. Really? Yes. But this place, which is called... What was it called it then? Uh, Matacana. Matacana. It's just a few kilometres north of Warkworth. But coffee is really only an aside in this episode because my favourite thing that I brought back, and I don't know about you, but mine was chocolate. And the big make in New Zealand is Whittaker's. And their kind of standard chocolate is creamy milk. And it comes in all these different shapes and sizes. We got like this. There's a little three pack there as well. We got the mini ones. We got the block. They also do. Um, what was it called? Varieties. No, there was. It, it was like a mini block of three. There were like three big chunks in it. And a slab. A slab. Yes, I think it might have been a slab. Why, Why is it called a slab? Because it's. I don't think it was actually. I think it was. It was like a block. Packaged together. Yeah. And it's not only creamy milk, they do other flavours, like there's dark chocolate as well, but also, and we've only got one of these left because we ate them all. Right. Yeah, hokey pokey. And that has got like crispy bits. So if you think nougat about crunchy, tea. not nougat, it's no, more like a crunchy. There's like some, um, I don't even know how to describe it. Well, it's, it's like the stuff you'd find in a crunchy bar. So it's very, very textured and there's like lots of bits in it when you bite into it. Yes. Now, Whittaker's is to New Zealand what Cadbury's Dairy Milk is to the oh, UK. Oh, I do love that. I do dairy find milk. that if you get Cadbury's made in other countries, apart from Ireland, uh, it doesn't taste the same because we did get Cadbury's Dairy Milk when we were in New Zealand. And the variety that you get there is actually made in Tasmania, in Australia. And it didn't taste the same. I didn't like it. Do you think it's because of the sugar content? It's, well, something to do with the ingredients. But we're going to try one of these little mini ones now with our lovely coffee. And we should also point out these cups. Where did they come from, Paul? Devonport at the Cross. The Cross, the Salvation Army. Red Cross. I was no, it was the Salvation Army. I was going to say Red Cross. Mm. The Op Shop. Which is like the second hand, um, but what do you call a second hand shop? You said it's a charity shop. A charity, yeah, second, <laughs> second hand charity shop, yeah. Okay, so here we are, I've ripped the paper off and it says Whittaker's on there as well. And uh, I'm going to like, just eat it in one go, I think. Mmm. This is just absolutely delicious. Mm. 
I can't begin to tell you how nice it is. It's nice and creamy. Mm. You do taste the real, real creaminess, creaminess out of it. Mm. Um, the other thing I should tell you about some of the Whitaker's bars, they are also in Maori. Mmm! So this one says, made in New Zealand, he mea hanga aatora. So, I think Ataroa, that's... Aatoroa, right? Aatoroa. I've got to really learn my Maori a bit better. Um, I was going to read you the history of Whitaker's, oh, but no. I'm, I'm afraid... Um, <laughs> It's it's all it's all in Mary on this one. Should we read it anyway? I'm not going to read it. I'm not going to butcher the language like that. But basically, um, it has dated back from 1896 when it was created by Brian Whitaker mm. and somebody else. And it says we like to make good, honest chocolate, so we have committed to Rainforest Alliance certification and. Whereabouts exactly in New Zealand is it made? Uh, here we are. Elsden, Porowua. I don't know where exactly that is. But yeah, this is absolutely mm. fab. And I think you might be able to get it in the UK, but it's through um, importation stores. So it's probably going to cost quite a lot. The price for this was about... I would say for one of one of these bars, one dollar sixty, so about eighty p, something like that. So it's comparable with what you might find in the UK. I have a declaration to make. Please subscribe to It's Paul and Marcus on YouTube. that that might be one of the best chocolates I've ever had. No, no, it's just very, very creamy. And I think that they use a really good co uh, cocoa or cacao. Oh, uh, on each of our episodes, looking back at New Zealand, we will also have a special guest. And today we have this lovely kiwi. And it's a little baby one, and this one doesn't make a noise. We do have some Kiwis that make noises, but they're not here today. You could see them on our children's episode, or at least one of them. Like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. So please subscribe. If you're traveling to New Zealand, one of the tips and tricks that you really need to know about is how to get through Border Patrol. Isn't that right, Paul? <laughs> There's a TV show actually called Border Patrol and it scared the knickers off me. Before I were... was obsessive compulsively watching it and I think I watched uh, series one to series 12. I think that there were uh, maybe one or two series that came out afterwards, but then they weren't broadcast here. Um, so the first thing you need to know is to apply for the NZETA. Oh, yes. yes, the Electronic Travel Authority. So you can go online to do that. Don't be like paying, someone paying to somebody to do, do it for you. you. Only go through the official New Zealand government website for that. Now, the thing is, because New Zealand is an island nation and it's so far away from everywhere else, the closest is Australia, which is what a four hour flight is it three hour flight or something three to four hours so it's not people think oh it's like just next door no it's not really um so they are very protective of their borders quite rightly so and of what comes in so there are major restrictions yes. on what you can bring into the country and most of them revolve around food isn't that right paul so you cannot bring fresh vegetables fresh fruit fresh nuts Fresh honey, no. Honey is a definite no. You can't bring any meats. You can't bring eggs. There were other things that... Well, I there's remember. other things as well. You can't bring plants. You can't bring anything that's wooden. No, Orange. I, I wouldn't even bring a pencil, and I was scared oh. to bring a pencil. You must declare food and... Everything. I would declare everything on the form that they will give you on the plane. It's actually going electronic now. 
um, but I think they'll probably still be handing out paper versions for some time as well. So just, I would just declare absolutely everything. I even declared my Kit Kats and they may have laughed at me, but at least I declared it. Because if you don't declare something and they think, oh, well, mm. you should have declared it, you're fined 400 New Zealand dollars on the spot. That's 200 pounds. And that is not a nice way to start the holiday. And also, if you are on prescribed medication, you must have a copy of your prescription or a letter from your GP saying what you are on and the doses that you take. So I was like really stressing out about this because <laughs> over in the UK, most prescriptions are electronic now. I don't have a copy of it. Anyway, cut a long story short, I was able to eventually get one at my GP clinic and it wasn't a problem at all. In fact, when we went through the Border Patrol, um, they sent us through most of the clear areas. So some people, I mean, everybody has to line up. There's, you either line up in an area with nothing to declare. Which or, was even longer than the ones that you do declare. Yeah, the, the nothing to declare line was longer than they do than the to declare one. Probably because there's a lot of people in the nothing to declare line who actually should be declaring stuff. They should be, and I think that if in doubt, it's always good to write it down just in case because you don't want to be caught out and and Fine. be fined the four hundred dollars. Well, I declared um, Pringles, and then I think I had some biscuits, and then I said, said, okay, I have these things, and then and also your non prescribed medications such so as so I had my yeah. diarrhea medication, Very which important. which is very useful for when you have the runs and i think i also had some headache tablets like ibuprofen and then but then that was also okay but it's no it's just if in doubt write it down because otherwise they might slap you with a fine um so we went through all of that and then right at the end the dog came by oh, the doggy the dog the sniffer dog the sniffer dog ran through us maybe a couple of times yeah. to smell whether we actually had anything. Then I thought, okay, that's really good because if because if we didn't declare something and they found it and then we would have been in really hot water at that point. You've got to be careful because if you're coming off a plane and let's say they've given you fruit or something, you think, oh, I'll have that later, I'll stick it in my bag. Or have like a biscuit oh, no. or, or anything like that. Or like any um, You'll be fresh. Fried fresh breads or something and also you can't carry more than ten thousand new zealand dollars who has that amount cash. of money anyway <laughs> I, I, but what i thought was i mean what if you were carrying like loads of fives or something and you didn't have ten thousand would the dog smell all that or does each individual kind of note smell differently to the dog i think that the dog knows how to smell for a large amount of currency yeah like like because when I, mean, I we're watched, talking colossal amounts, yeah. when I watched the border patrol, they sniffed like people that had like about like twenty thousand or like a lot and obscene amounts, mm -hmm. which is something we don't have unfortunately. Get on your bike! It's time to subscribe to it's Paul and Marcus on YouTube. a sign it's time to start it is it is indeed definitely time to start i'm going to be making the wagyu bolognese mince over sourdough and the poached eggs the poached eggs i'm a little bit scared about because i've never done it before but it did make such a difference in the overall dish so i'm going to give it a go and see how this one turns out I wasn't able to find Wagyu mince per se, but I did find these Wagyu mince beef burgers, which is basically mince but rolled up as burgers. So I'm going to be crushing it up and then serving it with the bolognese. So let's start this part, shall we? I am just going to be using some of this regular oil. This what is, type of oil is it? I think this is rapeseed oil. Okay. Vegetable, so, <laughs> I don't know, sorry. 
So let's get it nice and hot and I'm going to be making it the way that I would make a bolognese normally. So I have some garlic, some onions, I'm going to add some Italian herbs. I'm going to also be adding chopped tomatoes. So this is definitely hot enough now, so I'm going to add some garlic and also some of this onions. Not all the onions are going in. No, because I'm going to be doing it in two batches. So I am going to be making um, one pack at a time because I think if I make two, it would be way too much and it would divert from the heat. This is sizzling out. It's sizzling nicely. All right, so let's drop the thing. You don't need to break them up, do you, or do you need to do it now? I'm gonna break it now when it's in here. Maybe I need to lower the That'll see if getting your hands dirty. Does it need more oil? No, it's fine. I'm just breaking it. So while you're doing that, um, we are expecting friends. Yes, I know that is very unusual. Um, one of them is vegetarian. So you're also going to be making a vegetarian version of this. What is the meat replacement that you got? Popular one. Corn. It is corn. So you can do that as well. Well, it, it should make a substitute. It definitely looks similar to mince meat. Um, oh, I have the flavor. Sorry for interrupting. People normally add salt to it, but I don't normally like adding salt. Oops. And that was what? Uh, Parsley? Sage? That is the uh, Italian herb. Ah, okay. It seems to be sticking to the bottom. Well, that's what I said, you need more oil. I thought it looked a bit sticky at the start. So this is cooked now? Yeah, so I am going to cook the other pack of mints. So I'm going to transfer it over here. And it's exactly the same thing again. Oh, yeah. But then this is kind of like toasty. <laughs> oh, whatever. And then you just will keep this kind of like heated or do you need to reheat it uh, before serving? I think I'm going to reheat it. In the pan again? Yes. Okay. So let's add some of this. So we'll come back when it's the next stage. Okay. What are you saying, dear? I know what you're saying. You're saying, why don't you subscribe to Paul and Marcus's show on YouTube? Please subscribe. Okay, so this mince is nice and hot now and it's nice and cooked so i could add the other mince back to it to also cook as well and now you're going to add some tomato to this is that so right i'm going to be adding chopped tomatoes the chopped tomato i might need another can and you need to save a little from the other can for the vegetarian version. Well, I remember having the bolognese for breakfast and it wasn't overly tomatoey. So maybe... You need some paste in there so too. So yeah, I'm going to add some paste to it. To Ooh, add that's a lot. Some I thought you said it didn't need a lot. I like putting a lot. So just while we're doing this, I think it's probably worth seeing the vegetarian vergen, vergen? <laughs> version. <laughs> it is a meat free, no beef mince from Richmond. They do fantastic sausages. Oh, so you would right. expect that their vegetarian range would be quite good as well. Oh look, vegan actually. So is it's it good vegan? for vegans. And it says also it's a new recipe. So this is ready. So yeah, um, so 
I have incorporated everything to it. Um, and this looks like a pretty good Wagyu bolognese. Should I have a wee taste to be cheap? Yeah. You're not gonna use to put that bag in, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I was. This tastes very similar to that dish that I had for breakfast. To go with our Wagyu Bolognese, we're gonna be having some of this lovely New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. And there's a lovely picture of a kiwi over here. I've never noticed it before. And then there's also the kiwi bird up here and the picture of New Zealand over here. I've never noticed it before. I have bought this before from the supermarket close to me. <laughs> Are you gonna have some, Marcus? Sure. Is it wine o'clock already? Well, I think so. So we have the welcome sign out for our friends and we also have our New Zealand seagull with us today. Cheers everyone! So our friends have arrived for New Zealand Day and look there are lots of kiwis and lots of New Zealand crisps and wine. Oh yes. Now Back to the recipe, Paul is now slicing the sourdough bread and it has to be toasted, isn't that right? We had it toasted, so it will be toasted. Okay. So the bread is cut and now you are gonna have a go at poaching eggs for the very first time. You've boiled the kettle so and this should we turn this- This boiling water, so why do I- Ring on, okay. So I have, so I am, Heating these things, yeah, I'm gonna turn it off. So I am pouring it in. And we should turn the heat on as well. No, wrong one. Oh, too much New Zealand wine. I didn't have enough. <laughs> so the water should be boiling when it goes in, right? Yes. Okay, so in the meantime, we have five bowls set out because you want to crack the eggs directly into these bowls before you pour them into the yeah. water, right? And when it comes to poached eggs, you should really use the freshest eggs that you have. So, so we... these are the ones that we bought most recently. Yes. I'm, cover <laughs> I'm covering the date so you can't see when we filmed this. They are in date. Uh, they are in date for when it was recorded. So oh, we yes. are not cheating anybody. No. So this is boiling up. So let me crack. So we watched a couple of YouTube videos this morning and they said that you should crack the eggs into a little bowl, first of all. So yeah, I'm filming. And then you pour them into let me have it a crack. frying pan or a skillet, skillet filled with boiling water. Maybe I turn this down just a little bit because it is boiling and again we don't want to have a broken yolk I so didn't break I it. didn't say you broke it but if you do it this way if you do have a broken one then you yeah. can always discard it and use another yeah. okay so I basically cut all the bread so I basically cut all the bread and I am gonna toast it and then we need to Put the eggs into the boiling water. I am heating up all that stuff. We need to bring out the the greens. You need a drink? Desperate. Yes, the New Zealand dealer. Dealer? The, <laughs> the New Zealand dollar even is two for one. Yeah. yeah. What is this? So this is for me for now. <laughs> okay, so that's... So you are going to toast the sourdough yes. bread and while that is in the toaster and there's five of us here, so there's five slices, oh, you're going to poach the eggs. The first time you've ever poached. No, they didn't. And you don't put vinegar in it either. 
Otherwise, you'll have eggs that taste like vinegar. That's what Jimmy Oliver said. I'm not as big as fan, but I do trust him on this one. You agree with him for one? Yeah. Wow. So you can poach all the eggs in one go. The other YouTube video that we watched said that you should pour them in in a clockwise uh, direction, yes. and then you'll know which is first. So should we increase the heat? Okay, so why don't you have a go? Should it come to the boil first? Well, I see bubbles. I don't think it wants to be completely like okay, so bubbling up. So I'm going to start now. Just pour one in and see what happens. Should, should I try it on this Yeah, side? yeah. Just pour it straight in. That's it. Oh, it's weird. Well, it will look slightly weird. And it should take about three minutes for it to cook. Maybe it does need to be turned up slightly. Oh, actually, you know, look, the first one. Look at this. This is starting to deform. And then you can put one in the middle, perhaps, or even here. No, the middle. Can I set the alarm now or something? Maybe I should set the alarm. So we've buttered the sourdough and now you want to place so some of the green leaves. During the breakfast there were, I believe the greens were underneath the mints. Okay. Bolognese. Am I wrong? I don't think it really matters to be honest. I don't think so. Okay. So, it looks as though the poached eggs are ready. Okay. So, you now want to get... This is the one that I did first. It, uh, so, what do you... Oh, they need to drain, don't they? You need to put them onto a plate. No, I think if you were to put them onto a tissue, it might stick to it. Yeah. So, as we've done them in a clockwise direction, we do know the ones that are cooked in unison. You mean or in order? In order. Yes, I've had too much wine. I must say, this New Zealand wine is absolutely fabulous. Look at it. Sauvignon Blanc. Yes, definitely go for that. There we are. All five are out. So the greens are on the sourdough. And now you want to add the meat on top. The layer of um, a bolognese. So let's give a generous amount. Wow, look at this. This is the chef's one, if anyone is wondering. So now you want to add the poached egg. It isn't as runny as the one that they made. So I that looks, that looks fabulous. pretty awesome. Yeah. Cheese, my favorite bit. And this is Parmesan that you want to shave over the top. Well, this, yeah, this is kind of like Parmesan. Do you remember? It was like really, really cheesy. Mm. Well, again, you can make it as cheesy as you want or don't want. Right. So why don't you tuck into it, Paul? Let me get you a knife and fork. Yes, everyone's going to eat over there and we will do our we will tasting be standing over here. Up. Yeah, we don't have enough chairs. So if anyone would like Did to donate a, a chair. If anyone would like to donate a chair. Please, mercy. We need an extra chair. Okay. So why don't I have this one? Well, why don't you show us the poached egg first of all? The poached egg. I th I think that I overly did it. Oh, look at that. Well, not that's really. the money shot. <laughs> wow, this is that's the money shot. That's not overdone, no. No, well, I have never done it before, so I think I was overly um critical about myself. So why don't you taste it and we'll see what it's like. Did you take a picture of this? Yeah. I did. Thank you. Mm. Oh wow. Look at this. Well Marcus is Paul Mary. Right. Come on, let's have a bite. Mmm. So what do you think? How does it match the hotel? I think that this is just as good as the hotel. Fantastic. So this is our Wagyu sourdough a bolognese. Bolognese. Mm.
don't be a dormant viewer like this dormant volcano behind us. It's time for you to be an active subscriber. So subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Paul and Marcus. If you're planning a trip to Auckland, well, you need to have an idea of what you are going to do. And we are here with some ideas. Over these three episodes, we will be revealing our top three places to visit that we went to when we were there. And we highly recommend you going to them. And the uh, third place on the list is... Mission Bay. Let's take a look. Welcome to Mission Bay and we are at the Trevor Moss Fountain and it's obviously saying hello because it's just picked up some pace. This is nice, isn't it? Take it in. I'm Do you not know sure something? when we're coming back here. There's a cloud over there that is in the shape of New Zealand. Where? Or am I just imagining things? That one right there. Yeah. It seems to be a slightly thicker consistency than what you would find at Port Stewart. Um, what I would say is that it's probably because it's a little bit wet because there was a rainstorm yesterday. But it's, it's dried out pretty well. Um, it's it's not soaking wet at all. Um, but it's quite nice. Look, look. It says Kapiti, a New Zealand original. Ah, and look at all these flavors. This is plant based. Some of them. Well, these two anyway. So what is it that you got again? Pokey pokey. Yeah, and the arigato. Which so the pokey pokey is the. It's like a crunchy bar. It's like uh, vanilla yeah. and crunchy. And the arigato is coffee. I don't even know. But there you go. It's, it's called Kapiti, and mm. it's a New Zealand original. So let's see what it's like. And then I have the triple chocolate and the vintage strawberry and cream. So do, does it feel warm? Is it? Ooh. It's sort of. Sort of warm. Do you want to go? And did it smell salty? A little. Okay. I am not tasting it. It's, it's nice. Not bad. No, I mean it's it's not stone cold. It's it's, it's sort of warmish. Yeah, it's more it's warming up. Do you know what these look like? These look like molten rock with um, seashells. Yeah. Right. Like Are they living? Kind of like blended into it. Are these living mollusks or something? Still no, I think, it. I think it's from the hot molten lava. And that's just the way that they, yeah, cool. They set. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's basically like an explosion, and then there's like the, the lava, and then they solidify, and then things that get caught in becomes part of them. Solid, I guess, yeah. over years. Gosh, I've never seen anything quite like that before. Look. Very strange. 